Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for our sermon today comes from our Old Testament reading, and we'll hear those words from Scripture again in the course of our sermon. My brothers and sisters in Christ, have you ever noticed that whenever you seem to be in one of those waiting rooms, whether it be at a doctor's office, a dentist's office, even some larger businesses, that the TV seems to always be on? And it seems that there's this sort of unspoken agreement, I guess, that all these places must have, because every time you're there, it's either the news that's on, or it's one of those daytime TV soap operas. And I don't know if you've had this experience, but I get stuck with the daytime TV soap operas all the time, and it just drives me batty. You know, I apologize if you like those soap operas, but they have just always rubbed me the wrong way. It seems in my mind that they take the everyday problems that we have in life and multiply them into this major sort of psychodrama for entertainment's sake. We've heard of those different things that you sometimes see. You don't know, maybe it's in high school you see that awkward love triangle where the two best friends <coughs> like the same guy, but he's really not into them. Or maybe that's sort of normal. Or maybe you uh, see the cases around town or at your workplace where people talk behind each other's backs and put them down. As unfortunate as it is, we're used to that. But in those, in those daytime TV shows that's always amped up, we see the same things. Hatred, jealousy, unforgiveness, tear apart friendships, tear apart relationships, even marriages. We see all these things in everyday life, but it somehow seems when it's on TV, it's got to be enhanced for drama's sake. And one thing about those TV shows that really bugs me that it is very rare that anyone is ever forgiven. Now, you might be wondering, well, where exactly is Pastor going with this? Why is he talking about daytime TV soap operas in church? Well, I once heard a story that would be perfect for one of these soap operas. It starts with a father and who had two wives and had children by both of them and by their servants. Needless to say, the jealousy among these women soon affected the kids. All the kids lived pretty messed up lives, but underneath all the problems lay this intense hatred toward one of their brothers. He was dad's favorite. Eventually, he had a dream in which he envisioned that his whole family would bow down and pay honor to him. Now, he gladly bragged about this dream to get back at his brothers. And ultimately, not the smartest move ever, because they retaliated. When that time was right, he found himself in a situation where he was about to be killed. But they ended up trying to sell this good-for-nothing brother so they could get a profit. Think this is bad? The story continues. The drama as he works his way up to second in command to a powerful government official. In time, this man's wife makes a move on the young lad, but he refuses her advances. After some time, her husband finds, him, finds out, and he lands in jail. Eventually, he gets out after interpreting some dreams and becomes second in command in the whole country, saving many people's lives in a time of famine, including his own families. By this time, you've probably put two and two together, that this story of this drama that would just be so perfect for a soap opera is a story of Joseph's life, the story that ends up concluding with that reading we had in the Old Testament today. It's a sec that section of the story would, it would, is that which would ultimately disqualify Joseph's story from being a good soap opera, because it drives home the whole point of all of that mess. It's a story about a people forgiven. As Christians, this story of a people forgiven is the same story. It's our story. It's a story of hurts and wounds. And then most importantly, though, it is a story of sins forgiven. But like Joseph's story, it's not always an easy story when you actually have to live it. Even Peter 
struggled with this, as we heard in the Gospel reading today, when he asked, how many times do I need to forgive my brother? And the Lord, showing his abundant mercy, says, 70 times 7, that fullness, you have to forgive him always. But as sinful human beings, that forgiveness is hard. We are daily sinned against at work, at home, around town, and sadly, because we are also sinners, we're even sinned against at church. We sin against others daily. We carry these hurts, whether they be our own sins or the sins of others, around with us. And they separate us from the relationships that God would have us have with each other. And we can only live in those relationships that way through Jesus, because He makes us a people forgiven. I know it's not easy to let go of these things that are done to us, but since Joseph, in Joseph's story, forgiveness is that which wins, I want us to imagine ourselves in Joseph's shoes for a moment. The first 17 years of this young man's life were spent in a home where he was constantly dealing with hatred from his brother. For those of you who have siblings, you know when you have siblings and things are good, they're great. But when things are not good, they're really not good. And it's not an easy stress to deal with. And it's certainly easy to harbor a grudge for all those years. Imagine Joseph adding to this pain after being sold by his brothers, left for dead, having a reputation slandered and being falsely accused and imprisoned for a crime that you didn't even commit. Once again, you, it would be so easy to internalize that, to take that and keep that and let that hatred and resentment build. Joseph could have blamed Potiphar's wife. He could have blamed his brothers. He could have blamed even God. And over time, he could have just become this ticking time bomb waiting to explode. Now, as far as I'm aware of, none of us have had to deal with quite these things in our lives. Other things we've had to deal with, certain. You may well have had people talk behind your back at work, making everyone think you're a bad worker. It may have even led to a situation where you were passed over for a promotion, or a good job opportunity, or even time off. Maybe you have dealt with a broken relationship where there's this extreme animosity between you and another person. Maybe it was justified, maybe it wasn't. But either way, the anger and the hurt is still there. Maybe you've been wounded by a spouse or another person. Maybe you suffered abuse as a child. I don't know what those situations are for you. Maybe today you're sitting there wrestling with those things, struggling to forgive for those things that were done to you. Maybe you're struggling to forgive yourself for the things that you've done to others. Whatever those wounds may be, sin leaves a deep mark on us, and that hurt seems to cling very closely to our lives, just as it could have for Joseph. But what was different for Joseph? How was he able to forgive his brothers when they had done so much against him? How were his brothers finally able to forgive themselves a lesser thought of part of this story. Let's turn to that text and see what God has to say. Verse 15 begins with Joseph's brothers and fears, if you're following along. They don't trust that with dad out of the picture, Joseph will continue to provide for them. They actually say, it may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil we did to him. So in their fear, they, they cover their rear ends, essentially making up the lie that it was dad's last wish that Joseph forgive them. It may well have been dad's last wish. Scripture doesn't really tell us. But it does tell us that the brothers use that as their leverage with Joseph. And it's easy to kind of skip over as we just read this text in English. But in that original Hebrew, it makes it very clear that this is a humble and honest request. Joseph's brothers are basically throwing themselves at his mercy, all the while knowing that they don't deserve it. They have a hard time believing that Joseph could actually forgive them 
They have a heart because they can't forgive themselves. So before we move on to the next part of the sermon, I want us to take this one lesson to heart. This is how we are before God, as Joseph's brothers. As sinners, we realize how great our sin is before God. And many times, I'm sure you guys have had this experience too, we find ourselves afraid of God's wrath for the sins that we've committed. Like Joseph's brothers, we just can't seem to get it through our thick heads that we've been forgiven and that our relationship with God is restored. Satan likes to come to us and say, God could never, ever forgive you for that. And he whispers those lies into our ear time and time again. And those things that we have done weigh heavy on our hearts. And yet God continues to love us, just as Joseph loved his brothers. Returning to our story, when Joseph heard that his brother's confession, he actually broke down and wept. He assures them once again of his forgiveness. And in the words of our text, it says he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. And this is what God does for each of you this morning. As we heard in that absolution, as we hear in his word, and as we continually live in our baptisms, God is speaking kindly to us and comforting us. He is telling us once again, your sins are forgiven. There is nothing at all that can ever separate you from my love because of what Christ has done. You do not need to be afraid. I will provide for you. It is from this humble realization, from having this comfort and this peace and having God speak kindly to us, that flows then the forgiveness for others who have sinned against us. As we asked earlier, how did Joseph manage to forgive his brothers? How could he forgive them for what they had done against him? Well, Joseph realized the same thing that his brothers did. Joseph knew God's forgiveness for him. And it is through that strength that he was able to forgive them. Joseph essentially serves as sort of the opposite, the foil of our gospel reading with the unmerciful servant. Joseph had a huge debt to pay to God, and he knew it. He knew as a kid, he was a, had quite the ego on his head, and he would never hesitate to rub it into his brother's faces, all those things. The love that he had from God, his dad that they didn't have, that coat of many colors, that dream he had, he never hesitated to show that off. And throughout the rest of his life, he continued to sin too. He knew the debt he had to God. And he knew he could never pay it. But unlike that unmerciful servant in the gospel, he forgave the lesser debt of his brothers who had sinned against him. He was forgiven much, and thus he forgave much. And the same is true for us this morning. When we fixate on those sins that have been committed against us, we lose track of how much we have been forgiven by God. We could never pay that debt that we owe. And yet in Christ, the debt is forgiven. It is covered on that cross. When Christ cried out in that last hour, it is finished. He was saying, it is paid for. That language, that Greek, to telestai, literally means, Debt paid in full. It is finished. The debt is paid. All is taken care of in Christ. It is only when we fix our eyes on this that we can begin to then let God's forgiveness rule in our lives. When we realize that the sins that have been committed against us are that one grain of sand. And all of our sins are the grains of sand covering an entire beach full, covering the whole earth. It is only then when we realize the magnitude of what we have been forgiven that God's forgiveness can truly take root in our lives. 
is only in Christ that that process then of healing and reconciliation of those broken relationships can then begin. So today, if you find yourself struggling to either forgive yourself, struggling to forgive another, God offers you freedom today in the cross. He offers it anew as you hear that your sins are forgiven. And to those of you struggling to forgive others, God offers you that same freedom to learn how to forgive. It was Joseph's story, and it is our story. And while it may not make a good soap opera, Christ's story is a story of freedom. Joseph's story is a story of freedom. And our story is a story of freedom. A story of people forgiven. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.